What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the vlog. We're doing a, a little something different this time around. I ended up doing two sessions in this video, so I wanted to do like a zero to hero type thing where I start at one, two, and then I work my way up to two, three, five, 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 ten, stuff like that. Um, you know, thinking I could do it, I thought I could beat one, two, but uh, I got absolutely demolished in, a, in one, two. I don't think it's the game for me. I don't know how people play. The rake is brutal. The rake is really brutal, um, and it was just you know, I was just bleeding money. I felt like every uh, every orbit there. So, yeah, gonna gonna take a break from one two. I think I'm gonna just try that zero to hero thing again. But I'm gonna start off at two three next time. Um, so this session you're about to see is actually two different sessions put together. Uh, the first one was like at the end of August, and um, this one, the second half of the video is uh, towards the beginning of September. Right now it's September twelfth or thirteenth, I think. So. Uh, a little late to get this video out, but um, put a lot of editing into it and stuff. So first session, pretty brutal. You're going to see it. I don't do that great. I actually uh, think I got cooler a couple times. Pretty unfortunate runouts on some of those boards. And the uh, second session, a little bit more interesting. I'll leave it at that. I'll let you guys, uh, you know, hopefully you guys get to the second half of the video and you see it because I kind of made the clips like rapid fire and um, it's, it's, it's pretty entertaining hands, I think. Um, you know, but yeah, overall, um, you know, we're on the come up again, trying to get back into the positive. So, um, hope you guys enjoy the video. So one of our first hands of the night, we pick up Ace King offsuit and under the gun plus one and have about $200 behind. I do a standard open raise here for $6. Um, and the cutoff calls shortly after that it feels great getting a premium hand this early in my session. Um, and it feels even better when I see the button jam for effectively $16. So this is kind of a dream position for me here. Um, I, I definitely wish he had a bit more in his stack there to jam with. Um, but then again, I don't know if he would have moved all in here with it. So um, not the end of the world though, because small blind actually calls the $16. And now I have a little bit to think about. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to go all in here. I don't think it's completely warranted. I could definitely just raise, but it's also not an awful spot to kind of shove and you know maybe make it seem like I'm trying to squeeze. So that's kind of what I decide and I end up going all in for $200. I'm curious what you guys would do in this position. I think just a larger size bet would have been fine as well, but um, ultimately I kind of want to get this to heads up I think with Ace King offsuit, um, especially since I'm kind of out of position. I just ended up jamming. So cutoff does fold, which is uh, good news for us. Small blind has a decision to make now and he ends up folding it which uh, puts us in a pretty good spot. There's a lot of money on the table and I think we're in a good spot to win this heads up with ace king offsuit. I'm still trying to get used to one two and how it plays. It's a little bit different than what I'm used to with two three and five five. Um, so I'm not entirely sure like what people's ranges are typically and things like that. And that's kind of what I'm learning in this first session. I, I definitely don't do that great overall, but um, it, it turns out okay at the start here. We, we see jack two jack on the flop with another two and then a seven. I'm pretty sure we have the best hand at this point. So I go ahead and show it, and uh, yeah, sure enough, we do have the best hand, he mucks. Um, probably had like, you know, maybe king, queen or something, I'm not sure, but uh, we got pretty lucky there. In the next hand, we pick up pocket nines. I open for $6, middle position calls, and the hijack jams for $20. I uh, was not expecting that. The big blind calls it pretty much right away, so um, it's on me now to make a decision. I'm honestly thinking about going all in again. I think this is a pretty good spot because um, I'm in a position to squeeze and also I just went all in the hand before so I end up doing it and I go all in for uh, about $238. The big blind makes the call for $36 and we're three players headed to the flop now. I don't have too much at risk uh, because they were kind of short stacked. So I'm not too worried. Flop comes out queen, king, six, then a 10 of diamonds on the turn and a jack of spades. We end up making a straight. We might have a chance at this if no one has an ace, but fortunately, sure enough, in that pot uh, pre-flop, someone definitely has the ace and he does. So he shows ace jack and he takes down a pretty nice sized pot for himself there. Not too long after that, we pick up king jack offsuit on the button with about $175 behind. I always play Broadway cards uh, wrong. I don't think I do the correct thing with them a lot of the time and I lose some money. So I'm hoping to learn from that, but um, I see cutoff open for $6 and I have a decision to make here. I think a raise is appropriate, but I end up just flatting here um, $6. I don't know if this is the best decision. I definitely think I could have raised, especially on the button, but small blind, I guess beats me to it and he raises to 12. Big blind calls, middle position calls, and the cutoff is about to make a call as well. Now I'm kind of in a weird spot. Um, I just end up calling because I have position and also I have a hand that I think benefits from seeing the flop. 
especially with that many players, uh, you know, calling and, and raising preflop, I feel like we, we might be behind a couple hands here. So I just played it safe and, and that's what I went with. The flop can't get much better for us. It's a 9-6 jack with two diamonds and instantly the small blind bets $20. We have top pair and a great kicker, so I'm not going to be going anywhere. We don't block any of the diamonds. It's a little bit unfortunate, but um, anyways, the big blind calls $20, middle position, and the cutoff both fold. If we had the king of diamonds, we'd be in a great spot right now, but we still are in a pretty solid spot. I think we have the best hand, so I go ahead and put the call in for $20. Really hoping no diamond on the turn. Um, that's going to be scary, and it comes, the two of diamonds. Small blind instantly shoves for $42 um, without even thinking, and the big blind folds shortly after that. Now the pot's getting quite large, and I have to tank for a bit here to kind of think through this. My thought process is there's two players to act right after him, and he uh, shoved right away. If he hit the flush, I feel like that would be unlikely because uh, maybe he'd want us to catch up, or you know, the diamond would scare some of us. Maybe he hit a low flush, I'm not totally sure. But in my opinion, this looks very bluffy. Uh, I think maybe he's on another diamond draw and he needs one more and it, you know, it's worth jamming here to maybe get some fold equity. So I kind of think through that and I go ahead and call. Queen of diamonds comes out. Worst thing we could possibly see, but he shows Jack 10 offsuit. So I actually kind of see why he went all in. I don't think it's a horrible decision, but we made the right call here and we got paid off for it. Not too long after that, we pick up pocket 10s in the big blind with about $200 behind now. We've been going up and down. Under the gun straddles for $4 and middle position calls and now the cutoff calls as well. The $4 straddle basically got limped by two people already and um, it's looking like the small blind's going to follow suit here and sure enough they do. They go ahead and call for $4. We're in a pretty good spot here in the big blind. Uh, we have pocket 10s, everyone kind of limped around and we go ahead and raise it to $20. So kind of what I expected, the um, straddler does actually put in the call. I'm expecting everyone else to probably fold based off the action, but the cutoff actually goes all in for what is $20 for them effectively. And you know, um, to my surprise, a small blind just calls a $20 as well, no raise or anything. So we are just uh, four players headed to this flop here. I think we're in a really good spot, um, especially since the pot got so big early on. We just need to get a 10 here, and if not, maybe just all low cards. But uh, check that out, we actually drill middle set, we have a 10-3 jack offsuit on the flop there. And um, yeah, middle position goes ahead and bets $40. He was the straddle, so he's just um, sticking to that aggressive play here. That's why I check, just to kind of let these guys uh, do the betting, because they are both pretty aggressive players. I'm hoping this guy puts in the call. We definitely have the best hand at this point. Um, but he ends up folding, so I'm gonna end up slow playing this one, I think. There's no reason to, to blast off here yet. There's not that many draws yet. I guess like maybe some straights can get there, but go ahead and put the call for $40. I think slow playing is the correct decision, especially when the seven of diamonds comes out here. You know, there is a flush draw, but I think this guy's gonna bet, and sure enough, he does, so he shoves for $100. There's not much else for me to do, but go ahead and put in the call for $100. I'm positive we have the best hand if no diamond comes out. Um, eight of hearts comes out. And uh, both players show queen nine offsuit. So uh, both players show queen nine offsuit and I'm about probably just done playing one two for the rest of my life. I think that's about it for me. I have 40 bucks left. Um, don't know how those guys had queen nine offsuit there, but I guess they just do. So oh, whatever, we pick up ace queen offsuit. We're on the button. I raise it up to $8. We have like 39 bucks or 40 bucks left. So, um, you know, maybe we can actually make a recovery here. I'm pretty tilted from the last hand. I'm not going to lie. That was really frustrating. I can't believe queen nine offsuit got there for both players. I guess maybe I should have been more aggressive early, but the dude told me I'm calling anything anyway, so I guess that's just how it goes. So the flop comes out nine ace deuce with two diamonds. Uh, we have top pair and an amazing kicker. Both players check. Uh, I know we have the best hand at this point. I'm pretty confident in that, so I go ahead and uh, raise it up a bit here. I bet $12. I don't have much behind, but I also don't want anyone to fold. That's why I didn't jam. I'm still trying to make some money here and, um, you know, zero to hero it, so... Both players call me, it's going great, that's what we wanted. Um, there's no way we get beat this hand on this board, unless another diamond comes out, that would be pretty bad, but I think we're in good shape here. But I've also been kind of running into it this session, so I wouldn't be surprised if something ridiculous happens. The three of clubs comes out, both players check with two flush draws on the board, there's nothing else uh, for me to do but shove for my $19 that's remaining. I'm expecting both players to put in a call here because $19 into 61 is very little. They have pretty good pot odds, so 
Um, you know, it's gonna be no surprise when they call, but I would be surprised if I don't have the best hand unless a flush gets there. Both players end up calling, and uh, I'm not too worried about this hand. I think we're gonna win a nice little pot and make a bounce back here. So the last card that comes out is a three of hearts. Surely we have the best hand. Um, no way someone got there on this board, right? Well, the hijack bets and the cutoff folds and he shows queen three offsuit. So I'm done with one, two at this point. There's no way I come back next week, right? I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> And we're back next week and I'm feeling good. So we pick up Ace-5 suited and one of our first hands, we have about $200, $20 pot right there real fast. One of the next hands after that, we pick up Ace-10 suited, another one, about $220 behind, $35 pot, take that down real fast. And we're just gonna keep it rolling. We pick up King-Jack offsuit. We just keep getting good hands and I just keep winning. So we get another $25 there. I'm starting to think maybe I'm pretty good at one too. We pick up King-Jack offsuit. And uh, yeah, another win there. So there we go. We're about at 280 now, I think, in our stack. I look down, it's actually 270, so that's not good. But we pick up Ace-2 offsuit, and uh, we're on the button, so we get a little feisty, and we take down another $15 pot. We're at 285 now. We almost made our money back from last week. Ace-Jack suited. I'll go ahead and play that. We go all in. The guy only had about $40 left, so I go ahead and take all that from him real fast. Pick up Ace-10 suited again, we have about 310 behind, and uh, we're going to take that one down as well, $15 right there. The crazy thing is the rake is so high, I feel like I'm not even winning much money, but we, we pick up King-Queen offsuit and another pretty big pot, 40 bucks. we're almost back even to what we lost the, the previous week at 1-2. I'm not sure what can go wrong, we're running so hot, we pick up Queen-9 suited, we're both pretty deep, me and this guy, we have about 350 plus behind, and uh... Yeah, the villain shows ace-queen on this board, so I guess that's the end of 1-2 for me forever. Alright everyone, that concludes my 1-2 sessions over the last couple weeks. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing me uh, pretty much just get absolutely demolished back-to-back -back sessions. It was pretty rough. First session just didn't go that well overall. Second session we were doing so well and then... Yeah, that, uh, that nasty hand at the end, I would consider that uh, kind of a cooler, I think, because I did turn the second nuts, and there's only one combination that beats me on that board, and we also had the nut flush draw, so we both went all in on the turn, and um, you know, props to him, he had uh, ace-queen, so he had the higher straight. That was the only combination that really beat me up to the turn, so um, pretty unfortunate that that happened, but you know, props to him, he, he was a good player, and uh, he got the best of me there, the, I was on the other end of that one, unfortunately, so... Yeah, but overall, I think we're doing okay. We're back trending upwards. I'm going to stick to 2, 3, and 5, 5 from now on. <laughs> the rake at 1, 2, I don't know how you guys play it. It's absolutely brutal. I felt like every single orbit, I was just losing so much money just from the rake. Um, you know, even when you win like a $20, $30 pot, 7 bucks, boom, taken out of it. That's such a high percentage of your, uh, of your winning. So not a fan of that. I think I'm going to avoid that going forward. I'll try the zero to hero thing again in the future, and I think I'm gonna do it with two three going forward from now on. Um, not gonna do one two anymore. I should have listened to your guys' advice. It is definitely not. <laughs> it is very hard to win one two, especially with the rake. So um, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, those little clips at the end, and I'll see you guys on the next one.